All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Vince Rachopo, who is in Chicago. How are you doing, Vince? I am doing terrific. How about yourself? Absolutely great. And uh, Vince does uh, leadership development and growth, executive coaching, team building, management coaching, positive culture, culture change, employee engagement, and so on. And what we're going to talk about today, it's a very interesting subject, one that has, uh, I would say there's a lot of noise out there about, um, a lot of myths out there about, and I think it's time that we got to the reality of it. And I'm talking about artificial intelligence. And today we're talking about using art artificial intelligence to hire better, understand the best systems and culture and increase company performance. So um, Vince, just to begin with, uh, as I said, there's been a lot of uh, hype about AI over the last number of years. Today, from your point of view, what, what is what is the, the state of AI and what is it and what is it not? Wow, it's, it's, it's in its infancy, really. I mean, we are just beginning to break ground on what AI is going to really do for, for organizations. And I think it's going to be incumbent on people to understand fully what it takes to put an AI in, what it actually is going to do for you and what it's not going to do for you. I mean, basically, if you look at what AI does and how the AI works and how machine learning works, it's brute force. It's doing some things that human beings couldn't do in the time frames that we have. But you got to know what you're, you're looking at. It's that old thing about bad input going to give you bad output. Yeah, so it's very early, I think. And I see some organizations that are, that are, that are, that are, that are dabbling in it, that are moving into it. And they're usually the large organizations like the IBMs of the world, the Accentures of the world. Uh, and yet it's not a common practice. Not seeing, there's a lot of talk, but not a lot of use of it yet. Yeah, no, I, I would totally agree with you. I think that is that is one of the issues is that there is a lot of, there is a lot of talk about it and there's a lot of promises, but there's not a lot of use um, for it yet. So going back to our, our topic here, uh, how can we use artificial intelligence as it, as it is today or as it is evolving? How can we use it to to hire better? I think we, we first of all, we need to understand that hiring well also means hiring for culture of the organization. In other words, you we can have somebody who has terrific intelligence, the right intelligence, the right personality, but if they get into an organization in which there's a bad cultural fit, say they need a lot of feedback and they're in a culture in which the feedback is limited. Well, those folks are not going to do well. Mm -hmm. The work that we're doing is looking at both what is that person like when they come in the door as well as what is that person going to be uh, doing in the culture? What is that culture going to do? To, how is it going to interact with that person? So if you, so in hiring, we want to make sure we're looking at both of those elements. What we're doing, if you think about what we're doing is think about going to a doctor when you get a complete physical and you get an MRI, maybe a body scan, a full body scan. We're looking at the entire system of the organization. Most of what is out there today looks at statistical studies and we have very little information that we can actually use when we do a statistical study. So the, the AI opens up this world of possibility of what things are actually creating high performance in organizations. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's really interesting because let's face it, I mean, hiring traditionally, you know, it's been a, uh, it's been a bit of a crapshoot to tell, to, to be honest. And it is. We, and 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 it hasn't and the way we go about it hasn't changed that much um, over the years. So this is the first probably uh, may, the first big opportunity for a change in in how we profile and hire people. Absolutely. Now, if you if you go back to what we we know about hiring, let's let's take the basics about hiring. Most people do interviewing and they do two or three hires a year, maybe a few more. So we never get really good at it. And we also know that if you are hiring, that just doing a, an assessment like a cognitive assessment 
IQ testing, for example, increases your chances of hiring dramatically. So there's instruments that we can quickly get on board. You don't have to use AI to do that. Mm -hmm. You can quickly get on board and do a better job of hiring. And when you look at AI now, what we're at the, we're at the early stages of this, we're looking at maybe hundreds of factors that sit out in about the people and about the organization and how does that impact performance? And what the AI does, the artificial intelligence engine tells us how those factors impact that performance. It gives us a good model of what the performance is for that particular organization. So it's like, like that scan that you get the doctors. Yep. It says, this is exactly what's going on in your organization with more information than you ever dreamed that you could possibly get. And probably some characteristics that you didn't even know existed. I'll give you a quick example. One of the things we found with some of our clients in engineering consulting, for example, was that those folks who performed really well had a kind of a hard life in the beginning of their life. They had to maybe work on a dairy farm. They had to right. get up early. They had hard work and they did extremely well. Well, normally we wouldn't find that if we didn't look at some of these artificial intelligence processes and ways of looking at data. Yeah, and, yeah. That, and that's, a, that's a fascinating point, uh, an, an example that you just used there, because number one, I think hard work is the one thing you can't teach anybody. It's either right. inherent in you or it's not. But being able to identify uh, areas like that, as you say, ones that uh, are, are largely overlooked because there's no way of really assessing them or looking at them uh, today or in the past. I mean, that really that really accelerates your your chances or enhances your chances of hiring the right person if you can go beyond the standard uh, criteria. Exactly, exactly. We're not, we're not, we, we will look at personality. Uh, we may look at cognitive capabilities as, as pieces, but we are also looking at a lot of other factors that are going on too in the organization. What's the leadership like? What's the mentoring process going on in the organization once somebody gets on board? How fast are people being promoted? We're looking at, we're actually doing natural language processing of resumes to see what we can find in those resumes that we never expected to find. So the, the organization with whom we're working that's actually writing the software called, this is the company's called Caxi, and the president is um, uh, Mike LaVista. What he's done in the past, for example, is write programs that help credit cards understand fraud and mm -hmm. what characteristics, these hidden characteristics that are out there that are causing or that are predictive of fraud. So what we're doing is we're just using the same kind of AI tools to say what's predictive of high performance in sales. Yeah, and and, uh, and to your point then, uh, obviously the company culture needs to be uh, you can't just put that in at the front end of, of the hiring process, but you right. actually have to reflect these these traits and characteristics within your company and, and celebrate them. That's right. How do we build teams? What are the benefits of programs? What are incentives? What are the systems that people are using? Big frustration for salespeople is all the data that they have to collect. Are they dissatisfied? Is that dissatisfaction decreasing our performance in the organization? And right now, I think nobody knows the answers to those questions. And our goal is to get in there and find out in places and organizations where that, where there might be that interest and, and find out what's going on in terms of how the system is predicting performance. Yeah, you know, it, it's really interesting, Vince, because I think there's a, there is a real challenge right now with, um, it was starting before the pandemic, but it's definitely been accelerated uh, with digital transformation and with integrations of systems. And as you said, um, you know, data flowing in the right direction, the right data at the right time and the right amount of it. <laughs> not too much, right. not too little, but actionable data, all of these things. And I feel like this most companies uh, Either they're going kicking and screaming towards this or they're just trying to slow walk it. But they haven't really faced up to the fact that digital transformation is now absolutely critical and can't be avoided. Well, it's a very scary thing for most organizations. We hear these stories about these machines are going to be more intelligent than people. I, I, I'm not actually worried about that because I know how AI does machine learning. 
And it's, like I said, it is just brute force that creates the, the learning. It just does it a whole lot faster than what you and I could do. I mean, we could get into the details sometime, but the, they, there's you know calculus and matrix algebra sitting all there. It just does that stuff so much faster than you and I could do it. Yeah. And then give us this insight, it, it, the incredible insight into organizations. So right now, uh, John, what we're, we're looking for is we, we're doing a proof of concept with the organization that's writing the software. Then we're going to take that to other organizations and continue this proof of concept over a couple of times. So anybody who's interested in looking at this wants to be on the ground floor when it's going to be uh, more interesting, perhaps even less expensive to, to try to do this now and get a, I think you're going to get a, a leap up on the competition. And if you don't do this, you're going to be behind. <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and I love what you just said there, um, you know, about the, the fear around it, because, I mean, from my point of view, I believe that it's an enhancement because it's going to take away things that, you know, let's face it, that we're not particularly good at to, to begin with. And, and and it's going to help. We've got all of this data and all of this stuff. So it's going to help um, to to condense that and make it actionable and all that good stuff. But I think the most important thing is it's going to free up human beings to be creative. And that's the one thing that an art artificial intelligence, you know, can't do in terms no. of can't think outside the box. No, it can, it, it can mimic thinking. It, mm. it can do perhaps the thinking that humans do eventually, which you're right about the data. Can you imagine an organization in which we can look at it and say, this is what's impacting performance. If we tweak this, 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 and this, you can increase your performance tenfold. Imagine what that's going to feel like to the people inside the organization, the people that are doing the work, how excited they're going to be about going to work. We're going to eliminate a lot of things that are you know, holding us back. Poor leadership, poor systems. They'll be identified. You know, that's what to me is just, I think this is a game changer. I really do. And we're seeing folks doing hiring using AI, but we're not seeing the interface between hiring and systems. This, the culture of the organization. Yeah, no, I, I think that's fair. And I think, and I think that's probably where the biggest challenge is going to come because I think HR departments have somewhat operated and uh, not to, not totally through their own fault operated in a silo, but it's just, I think the rest of the companies always considered HR as like something over there. And and to your point, and, and they can help me with the recruitment and they can do all that stuff and I'll just get the person. To your point, I think those days are gone just like they've gone in sales where you can afford to just have marketing and a big wall between you and just watch for stuff to come flying over the wall every so often. I think you can't operate in, in, a, in silos anymore. No. We have to we have to integrate the data that are sitting out there. We just have to integrate that. You're right. HR and it's part HR fault and it's part organization's fault where we put HR outside the main operations plat pathways for organizations. HR needs to be a part of that process of understanding performance in the entire organization. I'd love to work with some really, really innovative HR folks where we can take a really strong look at the organization about performance and let them help the organization increase that performance. Yeah, uh, I, mean, I know I, I agree with that. And I think often we, we really waste, um, you know, top class HR professionals by, you know, leaving them to, to leaving them stuck with the stuff that number one, we don't want to deal with and all the regulatory stuff and all of that stuff and all the routine stuff instead of using you know, instead of, as you say, integrating them and using their, their creative talents to help us improve the organization as a whole and not just at the front end. Exactly, exactly. I, I, I did HR work with a, in my, a number of years back with recruiting, et cetera. Oh boy, it's, it's, a, it's frustrating getting an organization to understand the impact that the people and the culture and the systems have on, on performance. And now we can give an organization, not just an opinion, but objective, real data and which to make decisions.
it's yeah. it, it'll be irrefutable and undeniable. So I guess the next part of that then, as you as you alluded to earlier, is is leadership and management are going to have to learn how to embrace this and how to use this um, effectively with their with their people and 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 embrace it because I think that's the other thing. It's for anything to be successful, it has to be embraced by leadership. Therefore, it has to be understood by leadership. Exactly. And I think that's one of the big challenges is with leadership, leadership becomes so involved in producing the results that the organization needs, whether it's stock prices, whether it's profitability, et cetera, that stepping back to look at the, the organization itself is not something every COO is willing to, or CEO is willing to do. We do see some of them who are innovators, who want to do that. Those are the folks we want to work with first. Those are going to be the people that are going to understand what needs to be done in the organization. How do we tweak it, the organization? How do we make it better to produce those results more effectively? Yeah, yeah no, I, I, absolutely. I, I totally I, I totally agree. And just one, one last question. One last sure. question, uh, Vince, is so just Put on your hat, put on your 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 wizard's hat, and take out your crystal ball for a minute and tell okay. me where do you think where do you honestly think AI is going in the next couple of years? Wow, what a what a great question! Are you talking about? I think I oh, think in it's, relation to what we're talking about right now. Oh, in 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 sales, I think you're going to see more of it used for hiring. I I had a conversation with a gentleman who works for a, a large furniture company. And he said they're using AI a lot in pricing. Mm. I don't know how they're using it, what they're using for AI for, but I think you're going to see. You, I don't know if you recall the early days of computers when computers first came out. We started doing applications around low-hanging fruit. In other words, mm -hmm. we automated accounting. What a great place to start. Then we started uh, uh, all of the accounts receivable and then sales. I think what you're going to see is AI being used to automate some things that are easy to, 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 to use AI in, like, like on some of the hiring pieces or pricing pieces or customer satisfaction pieces. I think that's where you're going to see it first. So in the next few years, you're going to see that. I think you're going to see more of that. That's why we want to take a leap ahead of that and go for the looking at a, a creating a, a model of an entire organization and then allowing it to see what we needed to tweak to create higher performance. Yeah, no, those are great insights. I love the one. Actually, the one about pricing is quite interesting because I was having this discussion the other day with somebody and generally speaking, um, you know, there's not a lot of science behind pricing. Most companies, I, if you're a startup, what do you do? You look at all your competitors and you go, I either want to be cheaper, I want to be in the middle, or I'm going to be a premium offering. But there's not a lot of science that goes behind it. So I think I think this is areas like that and like recruitment, like you said, are areas that I think where AI will catch on um, more quickly. Well, yeah, I mean, we're already probably organizations like Amazon are already using it for predictive algorithms about whether or not, and I'm sure Google is using it for prediction about how somebody's going to buy or what the characteristics are. What you're finding is we're getting more granular, more detail about, about what the factors are that create demand or a, a willingness to buy. I think you're going to see more and more of that. I think we're going to see more and more grain. And of course, we're going to see it in the tech world, in robotics and other areas. Uh, yeah. we're, we're going to see more AI in that area too. Yeah. Well, listen, yeah. this has been fantastic. All of Vince's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, Vince, do tell people a little bit more about you and your organization. Sure, sure. Center for Expert Performance, Inc. Been around for about oh, 25 years doing work with leadership, helping leaders become more effective, helping organizations become more capable, and obviously producing better results from that. Do a lot of executive coaching. We do a lot of individual work with folks, a lot of teamwork with folks, and a lot of systems work, understanding what systems are keeping people from performing in the way that they want to perform. And we're always willing to network with folks, engage in conversations, as you know, as you can tell, I love to talk about this topic and anybody who wants to join in would, would be uh, valued.
yeah no absolutely i would encourage people to go to the links and and check out vince's work and as he said if you want to get involved get involved this is this is a this is an area that's going to heat up and uh, maybe a good chance for you to get ahead of the competition so i would that's encourage right. you encourage you to go and check it out listen thanks again vince thank you for watching and listening and i'll see you all again very soon thank you thank you